We're here today to talk about the law of bivalence and the law of the excluded middle. The law of bivalence says that a subject either has a given predicate or does not have that predicate, one or the other. For example, let's take the famous claim, Socrates is mortal. According to the law of bivalence, Socrates either has the property of being mortal, or he does not have mortality, one or the other. It would be impossible for him to be both mortal and immortal at the same time. Another way of phrasing this is the law of the excluded middle. And this is going to apply in varying degrees and in different ways to analytic statements, synthetic statements, and prescriptive statements. It applies most obviously to analytic statements, such as the one that we gave you about Socrates being mortal. Because Socrates is a man, and one of the defining characteristics for being human is that one is mortal. So when we say that the law of the excluded middle applies, what we are saying is that Socrates is either mortal or he is not mortal. He can't be somewhere in between. Let's demonstrate this with our little logic stacks here. This shows us the stack of things mortal. Socrates is represented by this blue piece. When we say that the law of the excluded middle applies, Socrates is either on the stack of things that are mortal, or Socrates is not on that stack, one or the other. He cannot be halfway on the stack. He's either on it, he's off it. There is no middle ground. What we are saying is, with the law of excluded middle, is that the claim is either totally true or totally false. Now, does the law of the excluded middle apply to descriptive claims, those that are in the synthetic realm and must be judged empirically? The answer is yes, it does apply. If we have something called an operational meaning, in other words, a way to impose a definition, an operational definition, on our empirical observation. For example, let's take another statement about Socrates. Socrates is bald. Is this statement true or false? Well, it's kind of difficult to say. I've seen pictures of Socrates, probably not photographs, probably just artists' representations. And he has some hair, but not a full head. So I guess it's more appropriate to say that Socrates has lost some hair. And if we define that degree of hair loss as bald, then we can truly say that Socrates is bald. And so the law of the excluded middle would apply. For any person, if we could apply this standard of hair loss, the law of the excluded middle would apply. And we could say that a given person either does have baldness or does not have baldness. Here's another example. 
of the law of the excluded middle with a descriptive synthetic statement. Jack is tall. Well, in order to say that the law of the excluded middle applies, we have to uh, operationalize the meaning of tall. If tall is having six feet or more, then Jack is not tall. He's only 5'10". Here's something we're hearing this political season. Americans want change. Does the law of the excluded middle apply? Well, if we have a standard for what is change or what is Americans wanting it, do more than half of Americans want change? If so, if that's our standard, then the law of the excluded middle applies. And we can say, yes, it's true that 50% or more of Americans want change, or we can say, no, it is not true. The law of the excluded middle would apply. What about in the case of prescriptive claims? Well, the law of the excluded middle will apply if we have criteria in order to vindicate these value claims. For example, here's another one about Socrates. Socrates is handsome. Obviously a, a value judgment. But if we have some kind of standard such as winning a beauty contest, then we can say the law of the excluded middle applies because Socrates has either won a beauty contest or he has not won a beauty contest. Or here is an ethical prescription. Killing is wrong. In order to impose the law of the excluded middle on this claim, we're going to have to clarify some kind of standard by which killing will be judged, such as killing in time of war is good and killing of an innocent human without justification is wrong. Here is another value claim. Senator Obama should be the next president. Well, once again, we need some standard to evaluate. If we say that whoever gets a majority of the electoral votes should be our next president, then we can say that the law of the excluded middle does apply to this particular prescriptive statement because we will know whether or not Senator Obama attains that number. In other words, what we have done is we have converted these statements into something more measurable. This then is the law of the excluded middle. It applies to those statements when the statement can be declared either completely true or completely false. 